I, uh, I broke my bolt pretty bad. It's not even screwed in anymore because I dropped it six feet onto the floor. Uh, it won't screw into my lamp anymore. Hey, it's me, Tommy. Thanks for coming back to the channel. So today's video is about Aperture's new light bulb. It's the B7C. There's a few interesting things that are going on with it. The Kelvin range is 2000 to 10,000. And of course it is a full color light. I'm using the Citus Link app to control it because that is the best way to control this light bulb. Not only this light bulb, but also all of Aperture's fixtures are extremely convenient when you are using the Citus Link app. Matching a bunch of fixtures in the groups. If you, if you have more than one of Aperture's lights that integrate with Citus Link and you aren't already using it, now is probably the time to start getting familiar with it. It's, I mean, if I want everything in the room to be just one color, I mean, it's so, it's so convenient being able to control all the fixtures, the light bulb, uh, and if you have like an Aperture MC, something along those lines, I'm using the Citus Link app more now that I have more of Aperture's full color fixtures and it's really convenient. So suppose I want to go for the uh, the teal and purple look. I'll just move this one over to teal. I'm gonna just pick the bulb and then I'm gonna move that one over to purple or pink. That works. Yeah, so we're gonna go for that, make that one a little bit brighter. There, so I've got the Nova over here and the B7C over here. Now I was filming an intro for this video and uh, no, the little diffusion dome is not supposed to come off of the B7C. I actually, it, it fell six feet onto the hardwood floor and I damaged the little metal piece at the bottom of the bulb. I really kind of have to jam it in there now. Uh, I wouldn't recommend dropping these things. Um, it will get damaged. Surprisingly, if I jam it into the, uh, the outlet of the lamp, it works. Now it's not turning on right now because it's in AC mode, meaning as soon as it plugs in, it turns on. As soon as you stop applying power to the lamp, it'll turn off, so just like a regular lamp. But if you hold all three buttons, the plus, minus, and power, it goes in DC mode, and it'll pulse green for a second to let you know that it's in DC mode, and then you can simply turn it on and control it like a battery-powered lamp, kind of like the MC lights. Uh, the, way, the only way to charge this light is by screwing it into a lamp and turning it on. It'll charge faster when it's not turned on. So if you have it turned on and producing light while the lamp, you know, while the lamp is turned on, it will be charging, but it'll be charging very slowly. The fastest way to charge it is to plug it in, turn the bulb off and let it charge. In DC mode, you can turn it on, leave it on until it dies. In AC mode, as soon as you take power away from your lamp, the bulb will turn off just like a regular light bulb. My problem was actually charging the bulb. Um, I had to go dig out a lamp do that. I had to go dig out a lamp uh, from somewhere that wasn't it wasn't used because I don't actually have any lamps in my studio that accept a regular light bulb anymore. I have all LED panels and just LED fixtures that don't have the socket to accept a light bulb. So in order to charge this bulb, when I first got it, I was unscrewing light bulbs in my bathroom and letting it sit in there to charge up. So. For me, the challenge was actually finding the right fixture to charge this. I know Aperture is gonna be selling a case that will have multiple bulbs in it and be able to charge all of them simultaneously, kind of like they do with their MC kit that has all the magnets, uh, the magnetic charging interfaces. This will just have a bunch of sockets to screw light bulbs in and let them charge. The controls are pretty intuitive. Once it's plugged into a lamp, I really gotta jam this one in there because of course I dropped it. When it's in a lamp like this and it's turned off, and you hit the plus button while it's charging, it'll pulse several times to let you know.
I'm pretty sure I just fried this lamp. Anyways, <laughs> this video is a disaster. Before I destroyed this light bulb, I was able to measure all the CRI, TLCI, SSI. It's not the brightest light in the world since I still got some battery left. I'm just doing that. Looks like it's a lamp, right? So I measured the CRI, TLCI, SSI, brightness and everything. This light will put out about 100 to 120 lux or whatever. I don't remember the exact number. I'll put the numbers up on the screen. Basically the purpose of this bulb is if you want a high quality light, but you want to use the existing fixtures in a house uh, or existing lamps, then this is the solution for that. Also, it doubles as a portable kind of pocket light. You can stick this thing in places where you can stick other pocket lights. Um, you can hang these with like fishing wire to make them look really, you know, just kind of dangle around, look like a light bulb that's floating. Uh, these, these are special lights. Uh, a lot of people have been looking forward to them for a long time. They've got a little built-in battery. It'll last for a couple hours. I've been using it to backlight uh, things on tables. Honestly, I got a little bit frazzled when I fried the light uh, when I dropped it. So this review is less awesome than I wanted it to be. It's not gonna be as bright as something like the 120D. It's not gonna be able to fill an entire softbox and give you a great key light from far away. It's not meant for that. This is meant to replace a light bulb in an existing light fixture. That's what it is. It's a bulb. Okay, here we go again. A huge thank you to the folks at Aperture that were able to replace my busted B7C uh, the weekend before this video was supposed to go live. Uh, which is when I broke it because I was filming it last minute because procrastinators get things done. Anyways, uh, we got a new bulb in here so I can show you the rest of the interesting features and kind of some of the things that I needed to talk about uh, before I broke it. While it's plugged in, if you turn the light bulb off and then you hit the plus or the minus button, it will pulse three times to let you know that it's charging. Or if it's fully charged, it will stay a constant tungsten for like five seconds. It'll do a long solid pulse to let you know it's fully charged. And if you wanna see what the charge level is at, you can hit the plus and the minus button at the same time and it will pulse between one and five times to let you know if it's between zero and 20%, 20 and 40%, and 20% increments of how close to 100% of a charge it is. I couldn't get that to work on my bulb. It's probably got old firmware or something. Um, and also I broke my last one, so it maybe worked on that one, I'm not sure. If you want to reset the Bluetooth, it's very simple. You just hold down the power button and the plus or the minus button for five seconds and it'll flash through a series of colors, letting you know that it's ready to pair with another device. That's how you can reuse existing Aperture B7Cs with other Citus networks. It's pretty hot. I shouldn't throw these around. Uh, after a while of using the bulb, especially if it's at 100% intensity, it does get pretty warm to the touch. So just be careful if you are moving them around, you may want to let them cool off before handling them. The build is solid metal and plastic dome, but this little, this little piece right here is the sensitive part. So don't drop it on that. You can break it. <sighs> if you wanted to go through the Kelvin range without actually having to open up the Citus Link app, you can just turn the bulb on and double tap the power button a few times and it will cycle through uh, 2000 Kelvin up to around 10,000 Kelvin, or maybe it's, it's like maybe 8,000 Kelvin. So that's how you can control it. And you can also control the brightness without actually opening up the Citus Link app. And a lot of people will only use these for the Kelvin range. You don't act actually ever have to connect it to your phone if you're gonna use it for just that. If I was gonna deck out my entire house with Philips Hue bulbs, I would probably just go with the Aperture B7C bulbs instead because they offer so much more utility and value to a person that's interested in filmmaking. It also comes with this nice little carry pouch that you can use to carry the bulb around in. And uh, you may have noticed this little kind of donut round shape in the diffusion. That makes it so it is, uh, it has less of a hot spot directly in front of it if you were using it without any type of diffusion. I want to personally apologize to anyone that is pre-ordering or buying, trying to purchase the B7C. It's sold out and realized that I just broke one of the B7Cs that could have been in your hands. I'm sorry. The B7C is going to sell for about 70 bucks. At the time this video is published, it should be available on Aperture's website. There's a link to it in the description of this video if you want to get one for yourself. So that's the Aperture B7C. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you have any questions about this bulb, uh, let me know in the comments. And if you wanna get an Aperture Nova, there's a link to that in the description of this video too. It is an affiliate link. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.
I was trying to do this really cool kind of intro for the bulb, this video. Uh, and I had, because the bulb was round, of course, I had it sitting up on top of the Nova as a platform. And then it rolled off and dropped six feet onto the hardwood floor. And uh, I bent the little, the thing that's supposed to screw in to charge it. And then uh, also the, the fusion filter popped off. It's not supposed to do that. Um, I jammed it into the socket here and it still works. Although the electronics are fine, the metal is kind of bent and potentially unsafe. 